page 81, 1 Samuel 25 through 28. David again spells Saul's life. 25. David, Nabal, and Abigail. 26. David again spells Saul's life. 27. David among the Philistines. 28. Saul and the medium at Endor. Chapter 26. What thought must David be wrestling with? Hatred for his mistreatment? Pity for the demented king? Exhilaration that at last his moment of revenge has come? No, there is no hint of animosity or vengeance. Rather, David's only desire is that Saul spares his life until God fulfills his promise. Chapter 25 Samuel died, and all Israel gathered themselves together and lamented him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. There was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel, and the man was very great, and he had about three thousand sheep and a thousand goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail, and the woman was of a good understanding, and of a beautiful face, but the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep. David sent ten young men, and David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name, and thus shall you tell him who lives in prosperity. Peace be to you, and peace be to your house, and peace be to all that you have. Now I have heard that you have shearers. Your shepherds have now been with us, and we did them no hurt. Neither was there anything missing to them, all the while they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will tell you. Therefore let the young men find favor in your eyes, for we come in a good day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to your son David. When David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David. Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David, and who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away from their masters. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shearers, and give it to men who I don't know where they come from? So David's young men turned on their way and went back, and came and told him according to all these words. David said to his men, Put on your sword. They girded every man his sword, and David also grabbed his sword, and there went up after David about four hundred men, and two hundred stayed with the baggage. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to greet our master, and he railed at them. But the men were very good to us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything as long as we were with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall to us both by night and by day, all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider what you will do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his house, for he is such a worthless fellow that one can't speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves and two bottles of wine, and five sheep ready dressed, and five measures of parched grain, and one hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and laid them on donkeys. She said to her young men, Go on before me, behold, I come after you. But she didn't tell her husband Nabal. It was so as she rode on her donkey and came down by the covert of the mountain, that, behold, David and his men came down toward her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained to him, and he has returned me evil for good. God do so to the enemies of David, and more also, if I leave of all that belongs to him by the morning light so much as one man-child. When Abigail saw David, she hurried and alighted from her donkey, and fell before David on her face, and bowed herself to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, on me, my lord, on me be the iniquity, and please let your handmaid speak in your ears. Hear the words of your handmaid. Please don't let my lord regard this worthless fellow, even Nabal, 
For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your handmaid, didn't see the young men of my Lord, whom you did send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, seeing the Lord has withheld you from blood guiltiness, and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now therefore let your enemies, and those who seek evil to my Lord, be as Nabal. Now this present which your servant has brought to my Lord, let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please forgive the trespass of your handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord, and evil shall not be found in you all your days. Though men be risen up to pursue you, and to seek your soul, yet the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord your God, and the souls of your enemies, them he shall sling out, as from the hollow of a sling. It shall come to pass, when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you, and shall have appointed you prince over Israel, that this shall be no grief to you, nor offense of heart to my Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause, or that my Lord has avenged himself. When the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember your handmaid. David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me, and blessed be your discretion, and blessed be you that you have kept me this day from blood guiltiness, and from avenging myself with my own hand. For in very deed, as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, who has withheld me from hurting you, except you had hurried and come to meet me, surely there wouldn't have been left to Nabal by the morning light so much as one man-child. So David received of her that which he had brought him, and he said to her, Go up in peace to your house. Behold, I have listened to your voice, and have accepted your person. Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Therefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. It happened in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, that his wife told him these things, and his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. It happened about ten days after, that the Lord struck Nabal so that he died. When David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord, who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and has kept back his servant from evil, and the evil doing of Nabal has the Lord returned on his own head. David sent and spoke concerning Abigail to take her to him as a wife. When the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spoke to her, saying, David has sent us to you to take you to him as a wife. She arose and bowed herself with her face to the earth and said, Behold, your handmaid is a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. Abigail hurried and arose, and rode on a donkey, with five ladies of hers who followed her, and she went after the messengers of David, and became his wife. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel, and they became both of them his wives. Now Saul had given Michael his daughter, David's wife, to Palti the son of Laish, who was of Galim. Chapter 26 the Ziphites came to Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doesn't David hide himself in the hill of Hakalah, which is before the desert? Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having three thousand chosen men of Israel with him, to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. Saul encamped in the hill of Hakalah, which is before the desert by the way. But David abode in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies, and understood that Saul was come of a certainty. David arose and came to the place where Saul had encamped, and David saw the place where Saul lay, and Abner the son of Ner, the captain of his host. And Saul lay within the place of the wagons, and the people were encamped round about him. Then answered David and said to Ahimelech the Hittite, and to Abishai the son of Zeruiah, brother of Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul to the camp? Abishai said, I will go down with you. So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and behold, Saul lay sleeping within the places of the wagons, with his spear stuck in the ground at his head, and Abner and the people lay round about him. Then Abishai said to David, 
God has delivered up your enemy into your hand this day. Now, therefore, please let me strike him with the spear to the earth at one stroke, and I will not strike him the second time. David said to Abishai, Don't destroy him, for who can put forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? David said, As the Lord lives, the Lord will strike him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall go down into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should put forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. But now please take the spear that is at his head, and the jar of water, and let us go. So David took the spear and the jar of water from Saul's head, and they got away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither did any awake, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord was fallen on them. Then David went over to the other side, and stood on the top of the mountain afar off, a great space being between them. And David cried to the people, and to Abner the son of Ner, saying, Don't you answer, Abner? Then Abner answered, Who are you who cries to the king? David said to Abner, Aren't you a valiant man, and who is like you in Israel? Why then have you not kept watch over your lord the king? For there came one of the people in to destroy the king your lord. This, this thing isn't good that you have done. As the Lord lives, you are worthy to die, because you have not kept watch over the king, the Lord's anointed. Now see where the king's spear is, and the jar of water that was at his head. Saul knew David's voice and said, Is this your voice, my son David? David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. He said, Why does my lord pursue after his servant? For what have I done? Or what evil is in my hand? Now therefore please let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If it be the lord has stirred you up against me, let him accept an offering. But if it be the children of men, curse be they before the lord, for they have driven me out this day that I shouldn't cling to the lord's inheritance, saying, Go serve other gods. Now therefore don't let my blood fall to the earth away from the presence of the lord. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea, as when one does hunt a partridge in the mountains. Then Saul said, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do you harm, because my life was precious in your eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool, and have erred exceedingly. David answered, Behold the spear, O king. Let then one of the young men come over and get it. The Lord will render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness, because the Lord delivered you into my hand today, and I wouldn't put forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. Behold, as your life was much set by this day in my eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all oppression. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be you, my son David, you shall both do mightily, and shall surely prevail. So David went his way, and Saul returned to his place. Chapter 27 David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should escape into the land of the Philistines, and Saul will despair of me to seek me any more in all the borders of Israel, so I shall escape out of his hand. David arose and passed over, he and the six hundred men who were with him, to Achish the son of Maok, king of Gath. David lived with Achish at Gath, he and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and Abigail the Carmelitess, Nabal's wife. It was told Saul that David was fled to Gath, and he sought no more again for him. David said to Achish, If I have now found favor in your eyes, let them give me a place in one of the cities of the country, that I may dwell there, for why should your servant dwell in the royal city with you? Then Achish gave him Ziklag that day. Why Ziklag pertains to the kings of Judah to this day. The number of the days that David lived in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. David and his men went up and made a reign on the Gezerites and the Gerzites and the Amalekites, for those nations were the inhabitants of the land who were of old, as you go to Shur, even to the land of Egypt. David struck the land and saved neither man nor woman alive and took away the sheep, and the oxen, and the donkeys, and the camels, and the clothing, and he returned and came to Achish. Achish said, 
Against whom have you made a raid today? David said, Against the south of Judah, and against the south of the Jeremalites, and against the south of the Kenites. David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring them to Gath, saying, Lest they should tell of us, saying, So did David, and so has his manner been all the while he has lived in the country of the Philistines. Achish believed David, saying, He has made his people Israel to utterly hate him. Therefore he shall be my servant forever. Chapter 28 It happened in those days that the Philistines gathered their host together for warfare, to fight with Israel. Achish said to David, Know assuredly that you shall go out with me in the host, you and your men. David said to Achish, Therefore you shall know what your servant will do. Achish said to David, Therefore I will make you keeper of my head forever. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. Saul had put away those who had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. The Philistines gathered themselves together and came and encamped in Shunem, and Saul gathered all Israel together and they encamped in Gilboa. When Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. When Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord didn't answer him, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek me a woman who has a familiar spirit that I may go to her and inquire of her. His servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman who has a familiar spirit at Endor. Saul disguised himself and put on other clothing and went, he and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night, and he said, Please divine to me by the familiar spirit, and bring up whoever I shall name to you. The woman said to him, Behold, you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off those who have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Why then are you laying a snare for my life to cause me to die? Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, there shall no punishment happen to you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up to you? He said, Bring me up Samuel. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. The king said to her, Don't be afraid, for what do you see? The woman said to Saul, I see a God coming up out of the earth. He said to her, What form is he? She said, An old man comes up, and he is covered with a robe. Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he bowed with his face to the ground. Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me to bring me up? Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me and answers me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called you, that you may make known to me what I shall do. Samuel said, Why then do you ask of me, seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your adversary? The Lord has done to you as he spoke by me, and the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, even to David, because you didn't obey the voice of the Lord and didn't execute his fierce wrath on Amalek. Therefore the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will deliver Israel also with you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shall you and your sons be with me. The Lord will deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Then Saul fell immediately his full length on the earth, and was very afraid because of the word of Samuel, and there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all the day, nor all the night. The woman came to Saul, and saw that he was very troubled, and said to him, Behold, your handmaid has listened to your voice, and I have put my life in my hand, and I have listened to their words which you spoke to me. Now therefore please listen also to the voice of your handmaid, and let me set a morsel of bread before you and eat, that you may have strength when you go on your way. But he refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, constrained him, and he listened to their voice. So he arose from the earth and sat on the bed. The woman had a fattened calf in the house, and she hurried and killed it, and she took flour and netted it, and did bake unleavened bread of it, and she brought it before Saul and before his servants, and they ate. 
Then they rose up and went away that night.